Hello, my name is Dr. Janie Farrell, and I'm an early career researcher at the Australian Graduate School of Policing and Security with Charles Sturt University. Today, my presentation is pitching my research titled An Invisible Illicit International Economy, The Nexus of Fraud and Trade-Based Money Laundering. This research is based on the central research question, what measures can be put into place to contain and mitigate the impact of fraud-related TBML supply chain vulnerabilities and exploits on Australian economic security? To provide a bit of background, it's estimated that between 1.9 trillion and 3.2 trillion US dollars is laundered globally per year. This process of money laundering that washes dirty money enables transnational organized crime with links to acts including child sex trafficking and drug trafficking. It facilitates corruption and war, and it ultimately threatens national and economic security. Just last year, our National Financial Intelligence Unit and Anti-Money Laundering and Counterterrorism Financing Regulator, Austrac, reported that trade-based money laundering, or TBML, is a significant problem for Australia's current and future security environment. With that, TBML has been identified through its very limited research as potentially the largest money laundering mechanism in the world. It represents complex criminal behavior utilizing international trade routes to move the illicit proceeds of crime from one jurisdiction to another. The problem is it is understudied, it is not well understood, it has low enforcement rates, and it's extremely complex. We know little about it because of this complexity, which gives rise to analyzing its components and looking beyond the surface level of data available. One of its components is fraud, which undoubtedly plays a significant role in TBML based on the necessary processes involved in TBML. So by understanding this nexus of fraud in TBML, we'll be able to see trends and patterns that can be deployed to other components, such as proceeds of crime. Now, this is important to understand because trade serves a significant purpose in our globalized world for keeping economies afloat. However, it also serves a significant purpose for people with illicit intents. As it stands, there are little to no effective oversight mechanisms in place to adequately address the significant challenge. We need to better understand and protect supply chain vulnerabilities, deploy data appropriately, narrow the gap in literature, and bolster our national and economic security. With these growing threats to Australia's economic security being realized, the demand for advanced and scholarly research to inform TBML responses has never been higher. This research is going to help fill the dearth of research in the area and contribute to developing effective oversight mechanisms to combat the problem of TBML. So in terms of the idea, the hypothesis here is that fraud plays a significant role in TBML. We know this because of the TBML typology, but what we want to find out is to what extent so that we can appropriately understand the supply chain vulnerabilities and exploit to economic security. Understanding five key points is going to form the basis of this research. First is to determine the regulatory and legislative mechanisms for TBML and fraud, then to determine the relationship between fraud and TBML via existing case studies. Then we'll determine the supply chain vulnerabilities via a process analysis, then turning to identifying the controls for both TBML and fraud, and identifying the economic security risks posed to determine a theoretical base. However, as I said, there's a dearth of knowledge in this space and no real evidence to display what law enforcement regulators, banks, and national security actors are faced with. So a better understanding of this threat is needed. The challenges are going to be within these tensions that are identified here, both theoretical and practical. We need to understand to what extent the state may actually need illicit flows and how different agencies work together or don't on such matters. These are going to be key research considerations. Now, in terms of the data, the study is comprised of a two-phased mixed method study. The first phase consists of data that is provided by the World Customs Organization who have agreed to provide it. And this is a compiled data set of global trade, pattern that, global trade patterns broken down into these commodity groups, import values, export values, and country specific trends. Now this leaves some questions, which means we move to phase two which is interview data. The second phase is going to involve interview data, which is gathered by interviewing uh, Australian Border Force officers, which has also been agreed to. This data is going to include looks at historical trends, enforcement trends, and strategic and operational insights. 
turning to the method. For phase one, I'm going to be using mirror gap, also known as trade gap analysis. That is analysis of the gap between a country's export and import declarations. This will be undertaken to analyze the quantitative data. And it's going to uncover asymmetries in trade data to understand it within the context of Australia first, and then it can be expanded outward. Now I have experience with this method and with SPSS, which will be used throughout this process. And this step is going to aid in narrowing down which countries and trade patterns should be focused upon when we move past Australia. It will also illuminate areas where industry, such as national security and agencies, regulators, law enforcement, and financial institutions should focus their attention. But this gap analysis is going to identify the kinds of goods and valuations, which is incomplete. Hence the qualitative data, which is going to help validate this initial data regarding which trends apply to Australia and how that actually manifests. Now I have these extensive qualitative skills which are going to be employed to interview relevant stakeholders and also to analyze the data thematically to better understand the quantitative data and what it means in practice, specifically the, the extent to which fraud features in practice. So what is new about this? As I said, TVML is the largest money laundering methodology in the world. Yet, despite its pervasiveness, it is incredibly understudied. What's more, it may represent the single largest facilitator of transnational fraud in the world. So TVML and its associated fraud is very easy to perpetrate, it's difficult to detect, it causes significant losses for the state, and it provides massive revenue for criminals. It's also difficult to study, but this study is going to provide a better grasp of the problem. So in order to understand what is needed to mitigate TBML risks through existing control systems, it's first necessary to understand not only the mechanisms money launderers use to carry out their trade, but also the global control framework which these crimes are committed within. Now, an in-depth study in this realm has not yet been completed. Now, so what? TBML, financial crime in general, is a mystery. It's a mystery in the sense that there's a general acceptance that it's taking place all around us, yet we know very little about it. This study strives to address the problem by providing a detailed and objective picture of the TBML threat that can be expanded out to other components and other countries. Globally, citizens and political leaders are realizing that money laundering is a serious and growing problem. It's causing real social harms from gun violence to escalating property prices to destabilization of government institutions. TBML is significantly contributing to this problem. Now, recent attention to the issue has really shone a light on the fact that the Western world needs to act, but those fighting it need the tools to effectively act upon it. Understanding this nexus of fraud with TBML methodologies and the role of free trade zones, border agencies, and trade stakeholders is critical in stemming the global, global flow of the proceeds of crime. Now, this empirically informed research will yield both high quality publications and practical outcomes in an area of national significance. In terms of some of the additional considerations, I've looked at the study risks, which are low. The data supply is guaranteed and has been supplied by the World Customs Organization and the Australian Border Force. And the infrastructure and tools for analysis are in place. Plus, the researcher has the skills and capabilities to carry out this research. For ethical clearance, this approval will be needed for the interview process. No issues are expected and the process is underway. In terms of the scope, the study is achievable and it's a replicable study across components and across countries. The limitation will be relying on one organization's data. So when it comes down to the analysis, comparing with national data may be considered to rectify this challenge. There are a number of target journals that are applicable for this study, including the Journal of Money Laundering Control, the Journal of World Trade, Fraud Magazine, which is industry focused and open access, and also a presentation at the 2022 World Customs Organization Conference and resulting in a conference paper. The bottom line, the key message and takeaway for this study is it contributes an empirically informed, practitioner relevant, and methodologically sound model to understand the nexus of fraud with TBML with a view to strengthening global approaches to economic and national security, 
yielding actionable insights. Thank you for listening to my research pitch and thank you for the opportunity to present it.